Uh, welcome back friends. Uh, so, uh, we have uh, progressed uh, deep into this uh, course uh, of uh, combustion in air breathing aero engines and as you have seen that, uh, that uh, so far we have talked about uh, essentially uh, details of uh, chemistry, details of one laminar flames and then um, uh, fundamentals as well as modeling aspects of turbulent flames. Uh, so, as such this course uh, we can divide into three parts and into several modules as you have seen. But the three parts are as you have seen mainly is the first part can be thought of as the fundamentals uh, where we have looked into the basic uh, uh, chemical thermodynamics, uh, chemical kinetics. Mm, then we have looked into like um, uh, uh, like oxidation mechanisms of fuels, uh, then uh, uh, transport phenomena, uh, uh, governing equations uh, of uh, reactive systems, uh, then we looked into flames uh, and then we looked into limit phenomena and then we moved on to in the, in the second part we moved into turbulent flames, right. So, we looked into the fundamentals of uh, turbulent flows of non-reacting turbulent flows, how the mechanics of turbulence work, how the energy cascade happens um, uh, through the inertial uh, range and then uh, we looked into uh, basic aspects of turbulent combustion and uh, how we uh, we have looked into how the like Favre averaging differs from normal averaging and then we looked into uh, and then we looked into uh, as such uh, different simplified modeling aspects of uh, turbulent flames, uh, simple models uh, based on uh, basically mixing models uh, where we assume that the mixing is equal to reaction. Mm, uh, so, once mixing is done it is uh, reaction is almost guaranteed and then uh, we proceeded into uh, turbulent non premix flames and then proceeded and in the last class we have done uh, turbulent premix flames. Mm, so, all these essentially are as you see that all these has been done so that we can understand uh, what happens in a gas turbine or what happens in a aero engine combustor well okay but so far we have not talked directly about the aero engine combustors so the idea is that we have built these individual processes we have built we have tried to understand processes at very small scales that happens in kinetics we have uh, tried to understand processes how the oxidation uh, how the fuel breaks down to uh, to, to 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 different uh, to different intermediates and then it goes into products mm, then we have seen how we can uh, how those reaction uh, mechanisms can be uh, incorporated into incorporated into governing equations and with that different kind of flames can be analyzed so, essentially a 1D, so it is like a hierarchical way of proceeding that we have done. So, all these small understandings essentially fits into bigger understanding of turbulent flames and then this turbulent flame understanding fits on to the understanding of the actual combustion processes in a gas turbine engine. So, in the next part that we will start now, we will talk about essentially um, gas turbine engines that is aero gas turbine combustors. So, all these understandings, all these things like uh, kinetics, oxidation mechanisms, uh, the governing equations, uh, 1D flames, um, uh, the concept for 1D flames, uh, the pressure drop concepts, the, um, uh, the limit phenomena concepts, ignition, extinction and then turbulent con combustion concepts, everything feeds into this thing. Okay. We will not exactly sh show you that how to solve for a flame inside a combustor, inside a gas turbine combustor, we will tell you because that is uh, too much details, uh, that is too much uh, specialized okay and uh, you need to look into real uh, papers where this is done, I, we can give you the references. But uh, the whole thing is that, so all that has been understood, all that has been discussed so far essentially goes into our forms one or more processes of what happens in a gas turbine engine. Okay. So, now we will talk about the basic aspects of the gas turbine combustors that how does this device look like, how does it function okay. and uh, so uh, then it is basically on one hand we have this device level or the or the uh, or a combustor level or an engineering level understanding and on the other side we have already built this fundamental understanding. So, once we can match these two we will be in a perfect position to basically understand or even to go on to solve. Um, uh, combustion processes inside these uh, gas turbine combustors or later for scramjet combustors. So, that is the purpose that is it is not to this course is not about to show you how to solve for a, a, a combustion process, how to solve uh, uh, how to uh, simulate a gas turbine uh, 
combustion inside a how to simulate combustion process inside a gas turbine engine. But rather this course tells you all about all the fundamental uh, understanding necessary to basically look into um, uh, gas turbine combustors and the combustion processes in those uh, in these engines. Of course, uh, we will not talk about one aspect because of limitation in time that is called thermoacoustic instability which is also pro a problem in gas turbine combustors. But that is a little bit more specialized aspects and you can look into other courses um, NPTEL courses for understanding thermoacoustic instabilities. There are good courses available. Um, so, uh, here um, uh, we will look into this uh, aero gas turbine combustor okay, that is the uh, purpose of this uh, 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 lectures. And uh, so, the, uh, as you see uh, here um, all these uh, aircrafts okay, this um, uh, F 22 or this uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, jet pack or this uh, Boeing A or this Airbus A380 and these helicopters um, all these involve gas turbine combustors and gas turbine engines um, gas turbine engines as such uh, in, uh, in different forms. Okay. So, the gas turbine engine as you if you remember we talked into the in the introductory video. So, the gas turbine engine is really the workhorse is really the workhorse of aerospace propulsion commercial okay, or military for either way it is a uh, uh, gas turbine engine is present in some form or the other. So, what are the basic aspects of a gas turbine engine? So, this is uh, of course, as you know that the gas turbine engine comes in different variants there can be like um, a turbo prop, uh, there can be a turbo fan and there can be a turbo jet and there can be a turbo jet with an after there can be an after burning turbo jet also. Okay. So, this is a normal turbo jet engine that we are see showing here. Uh, so, um, as you see that um, the, uh, so the, uh, the front uh, end of the engine right after the intake is uh, has this uh, various stages of compressors okay, rotating machinery uh, compressors and then um, this compressor. Uh, so, what happens is that to uh, basically it works on the principle of a Breton cycle. So, the air as it comes in is compressed through this uh, uh, the compression action of the compressor um, and it is compressed to a very high pressure before it enters into the combustion chamber. So, combustor combustion chamber happens in this uh, um, combustors and then the hot gases goes out and turns the turbine. And then uh, this is uh, uh, passed uh, this exhaust gases which is still high temperature is uh, is accelerated through a nozzle and it exhaust and is uh, and it goes out through an exhaust. And of course, the turbine and the compressor are connected through a single shaft. So, the work input for the compressor essentially comes in from the work output of the turbine. Okay. So, now of course, as you see that the combustor is um, occupies a rather a small section, but uh, that is not because it is not important. It is of course, very very important. It occupies a small section because the compressor combustor, combustor essentially sees the highest pressure uh, inside the whole gas turbine engine okay, because of as you know to extract a work um, from a Breton cycle or from any cycle you need to add heat at high pressure. So, definitely combustion happens at very high pressure and that is why the uh, the volume of the combustor is rather less because the pressure is very high. Okay. So, uh, uh, typical uh, gas turbine engines like this uh, can consume uh, very high uh, mass products and um, uh, uh, the combustors are designed to operate at a very high pressure to accommodate that uh, to, to basically for uh, achieve high efficiency. And of course, you see that uh, in this kind of combustors uh, it is a cut section. So, of course, it is a it is a it is a it is uh, essentially um, uh, 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 symmetric or, or it is um, axisymmetric about this axis uh, the central axis of symmetry. So, here we are showing essentially this uh, combustor uh, occupies an annular shape in, in um, uh, uh, annular uh, occupies rather an annular shape. Um, uh, so, we will talk about this in, 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 the, in the following um, uh, in the following lecture. So, what is the basic design feature of a gas turbine combustor? Okay. So, uh, of course, uh, you see the combustor is essentially a annular duct. Okay. So, what we need to achieve in a combustor, what we need to achieve in a combustor is essentially we have a high pressure high rather high velocity air coming in. So, because the uh, air that exits out of a compressor is still uh, high velocities about say 150 to 180 meters per second. Okay. So, now this uh, we uh, for a combustor uh, what we need is that we need the fuel to burn. Okay. We need the fuel to burn uh, in a rather efficiently. So, what we can do is that we can take a duct like this a constant area duct like this as you see in this A and just inject fuel into it and of course, it will burn. 
okay. So, this is like a, this uh, very uh, classical 1D statistically 1D uh, turbulent flame that we have. And of course, uh, the, in a gas turbine combustor, the combustion will be highly turbulent because as you, as you know, if the pressure is of the order of 30 to 40 bar, okay. So, then may it means that the turbulence Reynolds number uh, the is very large because the density is very, very large, okay. So, in this configuration, uh, going back to this configuration, uh, we can uh, have uh, combustion um, in this uh, straight duct. Uh, flow can be laminar turbulent and uh, okay, even if it is turbulent, we can inject fuel and uh, why cannot we have a flame like this? Why cannot we have a combustor like this? There are two reasons. Uh, the first reason is that uh, the air comes out of the compressor at a very high velocity, okay. Uh, or as I said 150, 180 meters per second. Uh, uh, so, um, then if you pass this air, uh, this high velocity air through a constant area duct, the pressure loss will be very large, okay. So, uh, of course, uh, the pressure drop is proportional to uh, uh, the inlet velocity squared. So, and of course, you do not want pressure loss because this pressure loss will be reflected in the will, will cause a dip in your uh, constant uh, in your isobar, dip from the isobar in your TS diagram uh, and uh, that will lead to loss of efficiency. So, you want to minimize the combustor pressure loss as much as possible, okay. You need to maintain it as close to constant pressure as possible. Of course, that is not possible because the combustion process when you are doing combustion in subsonic flows that is invariably it leads to some amount of pressure loss. But um, even then uh, you want to minimize the pressure loss. So, if you are uh, doing this uh, combustion in this constant area duct, okay, you are uh, incurring huge pressure loss and that you and that will be reflected in the loss of the efficiency of the whole gas turbine engine. So, this is ruled out, okay. You cannot have combustion in a constant area duct where the air velocity is very high, okay. And the second reason is that you cannot have combustion in a in a velocity in a in a just like that, uh, that you cannot just uh, expect that we will inject fuel in a very high velocity air and the flame will be stabilized. That is simply not possible, okay, because uh, if it is a even if it is a premix flame, uh, as you know that uh, it has to uh, then the then, then the local flow velocity has to match at least the turbulent flame speed. A turbulent flame speed can uh, under normal circumstances cannot reach uh, 170, 180 meters per second, okay, uh, in, a, in, a, in this kind of engine. So, it is it is ruled out. So, so two things, number one, uh, this is ruled out because A, because number one, uh, large this involves uh, large uh, uh, pressure loss and number two uh, this uh, flame stabilization is not possible in this okay. So, the next option is that first uh, to take care of this what we need to do is that we need to basically slow down the air velocity. So, the air velocity can be slowed down if we just increase the cross section area of this uh, uh, before in, in this section that before entry into the combustor which we essentially call a diffuser. Okay. So, because this is subsonic flow if you increase the cross section area of the flow then of course, the velocity will reduce okay, by continuity equation. Um, uh, remember, it is a subsonic flow, so you can assume that is reasonably uh, um, uh, uh, it can be considered close to incompressible. Um, uh, so, uh, this uh, this we can essentially reduce the flow velocity by increasing the cross section area. So, now you can inject the fuel and uh, then the pressure loss will be less, but this does not satisfy the second condition. So, one is satisfied but two that is the flame stabilization problem is still not satisfied, okay. So, because even in this thing your air velocity even if it is like say a few times lower say two times lower. So, from 170 you go to 80 meters per second you just inject the fuel into the air stream you cannot have uh, combustion uh, stabilized combustion you cannot have a flame stabilized at 80 meters per second that is not possible. Okay. So, uh, mm, then what do we do? So, the option is that we can inject the fuel beside or behind a kind of a plate. So, this plate or this baffle will essentially will bypass this uh, surrounding air and this uh, surrounding air will essentially recirculate and we will inject the fuel into this recirculation region. Okay. 
So, uh, this will achieve my purpose because now the because this this you have essentially introduced this plate. So, downstream of that plate uh, or some some sort of a, uh, uh, of, a, of a flow reversal mechanism. So, the downstream of this of this plate the flow velocity will be very small uh, essentially 0 or even negative. So, in that if you inject the combust in inject the fuel the fuel will have enough time to mix and then it can essentially react and then it can burn. So, this this essentially comes from the, the, the limiting concepts if you remember the dumb column number uh, if you remember the T versus dumb column number um, uh, that uh, it, it has an S curve like this. So, you see you cannot have ignition beyond certain uh, uh, you cannot have ignition below certain dumb column number ok. So, the dumb column number has to be large. So, this this thing is reflected here that is uh, what is dumb column number dumb column number is uh, flow time scale by chemical time scale right. Um, so, essentially to have uh, combustion you need or to ignition and to sustain combustion you need to operate in this uh, regime uh, and uh, for that uh, your uh, your uh, flow time scale has to be definitely larger than the chemical time scale. So, this this uh, flow reversal methods that is employed here by either by a bluff body or by a solar that we will see later. Uh, is very critical to achieve flame stabilizations. It leads to some amount of pressure loss, but that is unavoidable ok. But still there is one thing that is left. The thing is that you see uh, uh, this uh, this combustors essentially has a very conflicting requirement ok. What is that conflicting requirement? So, the temperature here at the exit of the combustor which is also called the turbine inlet temperature that is uh, ab about say 1500 Kelvin ok. And uh, so, uh, that is about uh, 1500 Kelvin and that is uh, 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 that is the maximum temperature that uh, a turbine blade even with uh, with a single crystal blade and even with all sorts of coatings that is the maximum temperature say a, 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 a turbine blade can withstand ok under continuous operation. Now, so here the conflicting requirement is that at the exit of the combustor you want a temperature of 1500 Kelvin ok. But, if you want to have uh, hydrocarbon combustion and the adiabatic flame temperature of a hydrocarbon combustion to be 1500 Kelvin, then that is that leads to an equivalence ratio which is typically below the equivalence ratio at which the fuel can burn in these combustors. So, to uh, say that say the 1500 Kelvin this turbine inlet temperature or 1400 Kelvin this turbine inlet temperature can be achieved by hydrocarbon combustion of equivalence ratio 0 0.4 ok 0 0.3 to 0 0.4, 0 0.4 say 0 0.45 like that 0 0.4, 0 0.45. Now, you cannot have uh, hydrocarbon combustion uh, 0.45 is even below the flammability limit of most, most hydrocarbons ok equivalence ratio 0.45 is uh, if you have a full mixture then the if you go back to our flammability concepts it is below the flammability limit of a uh, of any mixture. So, you cannot have combustion at point equivalence ratio 0.45 premix combustion at 0.45 ok. And uh, or in air if you want to talk in terms of air fuel ratio that uh, you basically need a very large uh, air fuel ratio to achieve this thing. Whereas, the air fuel ratio in which your uh, sustained combustion can happen is very less that is your equivalence ratio at for this kind of combustion to happen is say about local equivalence ratio in this region should be about 0 0.7 ok. But the 0 0.7 will lead to an adiabatic flame temperature much greater than Fifteen hundred Kelvin, or to uh, so basically, what I want to say is that the margin, the equivalence ratio range in which combustion can happen here, that corresponds to a adiabatic flame temperature, which is much much larger than the turbine inlet temperature. Okay, so T adiabatic at phi minimum that is the phi minimum where you can have combustion is much larger than the turbine entry temperature or turbine inlet temperature T T ok. What is this is T T. So, 
what do you want? You cannot afford to have non-sustained combustion or you cannot afford to have your turbine blades melt also. Okay. So, what do you do? So, what people do is that what the gas turbine engine designers do is that. So, they create a bypass here. Okay. So, this they split this air here okay, and they allow some amount of air to come inside this region which is called the primary zone and there we have a essentially it can be even fuel rich combustion. Okay. And then they take some air from here and put it downstream and allow that to dilute the products of combustion. So, that the final temperature that is reached is less than or equal to the is uh, turbine entry temperature. Okay. So, uh, that is how on one hand you can have sustained combustion, but with the diluting air downstream you can reduce your uh, adiabatic flame temperature or you can reduce your, um, uh, your, your product gas temperature uh, to have a temperature which is suitable for your turbine blades. So, these are the uh, this is how the whole uh, concept of the uh, of the of a, of a gas turbine combustor emerges. Okay, of course, it's much more complex because uh, than this thing because here you have a uh, various processes. For example, uh, we have just given you a very simplistic view, but the, the most important processes are that you need to inject the fuel at uh, in a liquid form. Okay, because uh, as you have seen, the most important reason why we have why combustion is indispensable in these kinds of an aircraft engines and gas turbine engines, especially, is because. Um, the energy density of the liquid fuels cannot be matched with anything like a battery. Okay. So, that is why uh, you the combustion is so important for gas turbine engines, but to utilize the liquid fuels you, you have to of course, carry the liquid fuel and then you have to inject it and ensure that the burning is proper. So, that is why this, uh, this liquid fuel atomization and then subsequent combustion of that becomes very, very important. Okay. So, uh, that is the thing and then of course, this happens in a very strongly turbulent environment and uh, how this uh, whole process of this liquid fuel atomization and then combustion happens in a strongly turbulent environment that also needs to be understood. So, these are actually still very active research issues and there is still no direct solution to even uh, simulate these processes with very high degree of accuracy. And uh, so, but uh, the idea is that with all the things that we have learnt uh, you might be able to develop uh, these things better and uh, better tools and better uh, understanding can emerge. Okay. So, uh, once again to summarize the basic design feature of a combustor because this is so important. So, first of all we need this uh, diffuse a section to essentially reduce the pressure loss in the combustor. Okay. That is the first thing and then uh, uh, we give, we, if without the diffuser your, uh, your uh, if it is a if you are uh, allowing the air to flow through this constant area duct then the pressure loss will be tremendous and you will have uh, this pressure loss reflected in your uh, overall efficiency of the gas turbine engine. Okay. So, that is not acceptable. So, uh, that is why we have this uh, diffuser section to reduce uh, pressure loss inside the combustor. And then we have this uh, low velocity region which is either caused by a bluff body or by a solar uh, to essentially anchor the flame. Okay. So, the low velocity regions to anchor the flame and then uh, the thing is that for the required temperature rise the combustor needs to run at a very lean condition air fuel ratio of about 30 to 40. Okay, and this lies below the flammability limit of hydrocarbon fuels. So, the fuel is actually burned in the primary zone at an, AQ, at an air fuel ratio of 18 to 24 and the extra air then the remaining air that was um, that comes out of the compressor that is added downstream to essentially reduce the, uh, the temperature of the combustion products. So, that this can uh, be within the limits uh, that is required for the turbine uh, blades. So, this is the most important design feature of a of a designing a uh, combustor. Okay. So, you have this uh, baffles and you have this cooling air that comes in. So, this is the basically the, uh, the most important design feature of this gas turbine combustor. So, what are the requirements? Okay. The basic requirement of a gas turbine combustor is that uh, it should have high combustion efficiency 
with low pollutant emission. Okay. High combustion efficiency means that it should not have any unburnt uh, uh, fuel because the fuel costs and also if you have unburnt fuels um, it typically uh, what it undergoes some uh, steps uh, to basically create carbon monoxide and hydrogen and of course carbon monoxide is a pollutant. And when you have uh, unburnt fuel essentially it leads to this uh, formation of um, this uh, soot smoke and uh, uh, all sorts of things. Uh, so, Mm, uh, definitely high combustion efficiency also leads to low pollutant emission, but that is not a uh, uh, mm, guaranteed uh, that is a high combustion efficiency of course, um, just does not guarantee low pollutant emission. Other steps has to be taken for example, you have to do combustion at a low temperature reasonably. So, that the NOx formation is less as you have seen in the Zeldovich NOx formation mechanism that is um, uh, practically 1800 anything below uh, uh, anything above 1800 Kelvin uh, temperature leads to formation of NOx. Of course, it should must have a low pressure loss uh, for reasons already described um, and the outlet temperature profile should be tailored to maximize the lifespan of the turbine blades and guide wires. This is very, very important because the turbine blades essentially see the highest temperature inside the engine and uh, these turbine blades are continuously impinged on by this hot products. So, they are under tremendous thermal stress okay, and, um, uh, and uh, they are under tremendous uh, uh, they can they can uh, melt and uh, it can just uh, in no time and normal materials cannot survive in that. So, huge amount of research has gone into basically, basically um, essentially de uh, designing and uh, designing materials for turbine blades and um, uh, those are also one of the most expensive parts of the whole engine. And then we need to have flame stabilization at a wide range of pressure and equivalence ratio okay, and that is very, very important. And then uh, reliable and smooth ignition at um, uh, high altitudes because if you of course, you want uh, flame stabilization at high range of pressure and equivalence ratio that is true. But in case uh, it uh, just uh, flame just blows off at high altitude, um, then it must be able to immediately recover and uh, it must be, have a, ha must be able to have a reliable and smooth ignition at high altitudes. And so, of course, you do not want your combustor to be to be in a flame out condition for a long time. So, so immediate um, recovery by is immediate uh, relight at uh, and ignition at uh, high altitudes is recovery. And it must be free from pressure pulsations or combustion instabilities. Mm, combustion instabilities are very damaging uh, thing for a gas turbine engines because um, combustion instabilities are essentially characterized by high amplitude pressure fluctuations and these uh, results from the feedback between heat release and pressure uh, uh, and uh, the pressure and small pressure fluctuations and this gets amplified to create this high pressure uh, amplitudes uh, high amplitude pressure fluctuations which can damage the mechanical parts and then can also lead to um, uh, combustion problems. Okay, and uh, uh, then uh, we need to design for uh, minimum cost and easy manufacturing that is a very important thing. And it is uh, if, if possible and the future engines are trying to people are trying to develop future engines uh, with uh, multi fuel capability which can if possible works on synthetic fuels like um, um, uh, 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 synthetic fuels which are rigid developed by artificial uh, processes and also like uh, biofuels. So, to mitigate uh, essentially climate um, uh, uh, problems. So, um, uh, that is that is uh, uh, also a very important uh, uh, thing in, uh, in research nowadays that how can we have gas turbine combustor that works on multiple uh, um, uh, fuels. So, then uh, uh, we will uh, in this uh, then we will go into this in the next part of this class we will go into this different type of combustors and then uh, we will look into some fundamental mechanisms how we can inject fuels and how they break up and atomize and uh, so we will take this up in the next class.